three, two, one, zero. Hello, how you doing and welcome to the Blue Heart 1872 podcast. How's everyone doing? Sorry about the slight delay. Uh, tonight we've got Stuart Finlay, John McKinnon and Wilf Marshall. How's you all doing, guys? Evening, lads. Oh, I think I'm doing guys. I'm Wilf, hi, Stuart. Hi, John. So, so Wilf. Wilf, Wilf, okay. Anyway, yeah, do you want yeah, to start sorry, talking about the Aberdeen game first? Uh. Not particularly, but I suppose we'd have to. Um, what can you say? I listened to Wolf's rant and Rangers rabble this morning. It was a belter. Um, yeah, first 10 minutes we were non existent in the game. Then we came into it. And then, second half, what happened? What ha- actually happened? We went from being playing some decent. Decent football, not not the best we've ever played this season. But this second half, we just were non-existent, absolutely it, non-existent. And it was just the usual. It was the usual. It was the, sorry, Stuart. It was just the usual. We got dragged into their game. I got, dragged, we got dragged into a game. of stop start. Couldn't play. F- couldn't play football. It was just bad day at the office. Yeah, but on the on the plus side, that's that's only, it's still only one defeat in sixty. Oh, well, it's not. It wasn't a defeat. Remember? No, no. It was, but it's. it's it's a. They, they always seem to raise their game against us. They do, and we and as Wolf said, we got dragged into a battle. We did. And we came. We were lucky. We were lucky to come away with one point. We were. So, with the second, yourself, John. Performance. Uh, I just, I just think the first sort of ten minutes, fifteen minutes of the game, we just sat and as as if let's see how they're going to play, and then we'll see how we, we're going to play. You know what I mean? We just sat back. Very deep. Uh, we didn't really get any any sort of passages of play going uh, in the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, and we had we slowly got into the game, uh, and and obviously we went in front, but it was very you know with nothing going forward. To be honest with you, yeah, we we, we did. We looked like a team that hadn't played for three weeks. We did. And Scott Wright, anybody that you know, Scott Wright was poor. He got off us nothing. He, he was beating guys in it, and I'm sitting screaming at the TV. Get the put you know, put the what cross in. Takes another touch. Guy gets the tackle in. Okay, we won a corner out here, but I mean, it's for what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be getting balls into the box for Morelos. Morelos was starved pretty much on, on uh, Tuesday night. Well, well, for you, were you a bit surprised that Sands got a start? I knew it would be between Sands and Lundstrom and I get the feeling that the manager doesn't particularly uh, rate John Lundstrom so from that point of view not really but I, I certainly wouldn't have started him I, mean, I thought it was a hell of a game to throw him into yeah. I expected him to be on the bench I thought he'd be in the in the match day squad I expected him to be on the bench but I really didn't I really couldn't see him starting because the problem you've got with, with James Sands is nobody knows what his, what his best position is you know I mean I've got a, I've got a pal that that lives out in New York and he's, he's watched him for New York City and he says, look, he says he's versatile but he's one of these players that everywhere that he's versatile he's decent but there's nowhere you can say yeah, he's a centre half that can fill in somewhere else. You know, it's not like um, you know, it's not not like Calvin Bassey where you say well he's actually a full back but he can play at centre half. Sands, I think, from what I've been told about him you couldn't say that he is this is his position, but you can fill in in this position or that position. It's just he's he's as good in the positions that he's good in, but there isn't one that you could call they say was his. So I don't know, I don't know where we would play him. I think I've heard he's, he's best as like the, sort of the, the middle pivot of a back three. Now I don't know if that's something we might do tomorrow night just to see, but I, I was very very surprised to see him start. I mean, John, I don't, I don't. He never done anything wrong. But he was just kind of there, if you know what I mean. And I think that's a lot of people are saying on social media. You know, he didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't do anything right. He was just part of the eleven. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. I, I just I find like it very it. bizarre. I agree with Wolf. It was a difficult fix to, to sort of make your debut in. Uh, 
especially up there. And, and I think the, the midfield we had, it was it just it just lacked creativity, you know. It was Kamara was, was Kamara just sitting deep and, you know, defensive midfielder, screening, screening the back line. But uh, Hadji he scored his goal, but apart from that, I don't think Hadji offered anything either. Yeah. So we were think, very, think, we were very, very light and very outnumbered in midfield. Yeah, Stuart. I think the thing that I liked on social media was every Rangers fan weren't really blaming, although the referee was not he was not doing us any favours at all. But we all admitted that you know what we were pushing. That's what Curry Munchers is saying there. He's saying, "Evening lads, what's happened? We were pushing, played into Aberdeen's hands. A couple of players never showed an effort after the goal. And I think that was right." I've just been sent across a lot of uh, social media platforms and some uh, some of the other podcasts. It was just a bad day at the office. It was it was just one of those games where just the whole team was a five or a six, and some of them not even that. They were not. But uh, yeah, 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 just like Clancy, Clancy will always nail his colours to the mast. So I take take that out of the equation straight away. And I'll agree with something that Will said on Radio Rabble. Um, we get judged to a different standard. So if we had had somebody that could have controlled the game and basically took Brown out of the fucking equation, pardon my French, um, we'd have got judged totally differently. It was, um, there was there was no there was no bite in midfield last night. Um, but there was and no, no... And nobody that could have, that could have put it on Scott Brown to stop them stop them antics. Which was laughable, to be quite honest. But you got sure, away. sure. You, you know what really, you know what what really surprised me, right? For when when they got their penalty, and it was a penalty by the rules of the game. It was a penalty, and it's yeah. fair enough. Can't argue that, right? But when the guy went to take it, hell of a finish because the ball rolled the entire diameter of the of the penalty spot, right? Yeah. Now the ball's yeah. supposed to be stationary, so he should have had to retake that. And I'll guarantee that if he'd missed it, they'd all been screaming, the ball moved, they need to take it again. Yeah. So why weren't we? Why weren't our players in the referee's face screaming at him, listen, that ball rolled? Yeah. yeah. From, what I, from what I could see, none, none of them went near the referee to say, look, that ball rolled, he has to take that again. And yeah, he would probably have scored it because they, they've scored the last 22 penalties or something. Yeah. And that's fine. But let, let's play it with the rules. You know what I mean? And it's just, it was the same with the born, the born of Barris, which incident, where when Johnny Hayes elbowed him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, took, it took it to uh, about two, three minutes later. Um, when they had a dangerous free kick, they highlighted it to the referee. Now, yeah, but Barris, Barris, has went, Barris has went to the ref and went, look at my nose, and the ref yeah. went, play on. Yeah. And then they got a free kick and Brown went, ref, he's bleeding. Then he had to and go that, off. And that was basically, you know I mean? the, 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 the official was about a yard and a half away when yeah. that happened. It was just, yeah. uh, I don't want to get down the route of talking, talking about uh, officials or anything like that. Yeah. We, we weren't good enough on the night. And but see, see the actual penalty incident as well. Uh, just just right before it hit his hand, uh, one of the Aberdeen players pushed. Was it Banisic? It was yeah. Ferguson. Yeah. The guy that had, it was Ferguson that put the header and he pushed Aye. him. Do you know? So that should yeah. have been a free kick straight away, but it was totally unspotted. Yeah. You know, but uh, there's actually there's a cracking video on social media now, and it shows nearly every single thing that this so referee it. never seen. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 so well, it was, it was like uh, Scott Brown. With, the, with his, his scrum technique, he should, he should be yeah. he should be starting at the weekend for the, in the yeah. um, number seven or number eight yeah. for Scotland. I, I mean, we I talk saw, about I saw, all the time. I, Ricky, he's talking about social media. I saw a stat earlier that Rangers committed twenty fouls on Tuesday night, and Aberdeen got twenty-one free kicks. <laughs> That's <laughs> unreal. Isn't it? That's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you know, it was funny because like uh, I, I seen a couple of people asking, you know, is it time VAR was brought into Scottish football? But you know. I don't think we could even trust the people that are going to be doing the VAR. No, no. Do you know, it's, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same referees, isn't it? You know I mean, it's yeah. going to be. I mean, we say right, okay, get, stop Clancy refereeing games because he's because he's just not he's just not a very good referee. So they say right, I'll tell you what, we'll take the games off you. But you can sit in the booth and do the VAR. Nah, no, it's all right. Yeah. I'll take my chances with what we've got. Thanks. Yeah. I know. I know. I mean, the the yellow card, double yellow card for Kent. John, what do you think about that? Terrible. But I mean, surely, surely Clancy's sort of deemed as one of the experienced referees, if you want to call it that. Surely, an experienced referee should know the the way footballers act, right? Everybody knew what Brown was going to do. I mean, I've listened to a few sort of phone-ins and stuff like that as well, and everybody, ex-pros, etc., have all said the same thing. You could see it coming with, with the, the the one for the for the red card, but Clancy. 
he's a referee to me that when he, when he referees us, he can't wait to get cards out of his pockets. I mean, you through that whole game, right? Even the cards for them as well. He's pulling cards out of his pocket for no reason, just to, just to, just to, for the sake of doing it. And ultimately, these cards, right? They're going to they're going to top up and they're going to catch up then towards the end of the season yeah. for certain but players. He made he know? made calamity, calamitous decisions for Aberdeen as well. He, he's just right rotten. He, I he hope, just and I hope the representative the from UEFA. Like the game flow. The game was just stop start all the time. Stop, yeah. start, stop, start. But that, su- but that, su- that suits them, though. Of that suits them. We can't get that one. The game plan. Yeah. I mean, the only way they were going to score was, was from either direct from a free kick or from a penalty. Because yeah. I don't, I don't remember McGregor having a single save to make. No. I mean, but that said, we, we hardly, we hardly, we hardly bothered them at all. I mean, there was the boy yeah. uh, Lewis is saved from Morelos, and that was about. It. I mean, the yeah. game. Take the referee out of the equation. The game was dreadful. Absolutely yeah. dreadful. Terrible. Terrible. And let's and let's hope that's for hangover at the way. Um, we're bad game at the way now. Uh, you know, I, I, know I wouldn't be surprised. Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if Aberdeen struggle to win their, their game, their next game. Oh, no, the, honestly, the, the, next game, the next game's Edinburgh City in the Cup. They'll beat them, but the next honestly, game they'll probably honestly, struggle. Yeah. I would be surprised. I bet you it's quite mm-hmm. tight. I would actually want I to put so. a wee one, one, one draw. <laughs> but I don't know, <laughs> like... Obviously, I've not been on the podcast for a few weeks. Uh, did you talk much about the winter break? Because uh, I had another interesting start. That Celtic game the other night, uh, 10 out of their 12 players shouldn't they, wouldn't have made that game if the winter break never happened. You know, it's, it's a total joke, you know, and it needs to get yeah. looked at. Anyway, we don't really want to talk about them anyway. <laughs> what, what I was going to ask you about was uh, Morelos, uh, club, country, he's going to miss the old firm. Me, personally, if it was me... And I was in that position. I would have chosen club, but I don't know if it's as easy as that. What do you think, Stuart? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, well, he's, he's going to travel all that way, um, and I very much doubt he's going to get any minutes at all. Nice. Um, I think it was like last podcast. Wilfie said that they, when Colombia was in was in that last tournament, small yeah, tournament, the gold, the gold they had nine strikers, they had nine strikers and he wasn't one of them. And he wasn't one of them. Yeah. Um, so I'm not one into conspiracy theories, and I know I never will say, but surely they can't have a contact in Colombia. <laughs> but it wouldn't be as well, love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, well, you've got to give the lad a ch- his chance. I mean, if, he, if he's picked for the squad, um, he's got to go. It's a big difference from the the U- European um, international breaks and stuff like that to the rest of the world. Uh, so we, we knew when we signed this kind of uh, when we signed Morelos that he had the potential to go that far. So you've just you've, you've got to let him go. Because yeah, there's no doubt, if he, if, no doubt if he'd have refused, I bet you Colombia would have pulled that cl- that FIFA clause where they he, is it three days before and three days after he couldn't play. Yeah, I mean obviously he's he's, he's brought back Itton, uh and then we've got Sakala as well, but. I, I think we need to kind of strengthen a few positions before this uh, January transfer windows. Who, yeah, do, who do you think we're kind of looking for? Oh, we need definitely the right winger. We do. Um, uh, somebody who's of the same um, potential or, or class as Ryan Kent that can, that can damage teams coming from the coming from the wing. Uh, we need a, an attacking midfielder. Somebody in the ilk of uh, Scotty Arfield to give because he's he's getting older, um, he's picking up more and more injuries now. But he's I'd still offer Scotty Arfield another contract, I would. But to get, bring in somebody else that can actually do that kind of role that will get beyond the strikers and also have that little bit of dig, not be afraid to put the challenge in. Yeah, I mean I I, I love Arfield as well, but I, I have heard rumours uh, that he's he's already signed an undisclosed fee with another club, but I've not found out what club, but. He's, okay, he's I can understand. I can understand that if he if he does go because he's only got potentially another three, maybe four are years we, left in him. Are we talking this transfer window though, Ricky? For after yeah, aye, aye, the aye. end of January. You know, so that's why it's well, kind of a bit worrying because I heard Barisic as well uh, doing his interview the other day, and he was saying you'll find out about my future in February, which makes you kind of think. I wonder if he's signed a, a, a kind of pre-season contract with somebody as well. You know, it's. I don't know. If they, if they have, th- if they have I would, as long as they give us their best to the end of the season, they'll go with my best regards. They will. No, I, think, I think we're talking. I'm going this this window, Stuart. Yeah, yeah, aye. yeah. Yeah. 
So. Our, our field's meant to be at the end of this month, and then uh, oh, I, yeah, I just took from Barisic away. He was talking about you'll find out in February about my future. You know, I, I just find that a, quite a strange thing to say. Well, obviously, he we, we won't be going this window then because the window finishes nah. on the seventy first. Nah, I know. Well, that, same, that, same that, was, that, that was sorry, Stuart. That was Barisic's point. They kept asking yeah. him. You know, there, there's all this speculation. He said, "Well, you'll find out where my future is when the basically when the window's closed." Yeah. I mean, what we've got to remember is that you know English isn't Barisic's first language, so. That's probably his way of saying, well, wait and see, wait and see where I am, you know, yeah. Yeah. but I don't know. I, 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 I like your optimism, no, I like that, I like that, Wolf. Uh, <laughs> see, see where Abel being away on international duty, Wolf, does that mean that he can't actually sign for another club now then? Because he won't I be back in time so. if, they, if they do I well, so that's quite a bonus. No, I, th- I still think he'll be able to sign because obviously he'll have, he'll have people because they've all got people these days, so he'll have, he'll yeah. have people uh, doing his bidding for him, they'll, they'll agree to it and he'll, he'll be... If he, if he was to sign for somebody else, he'd, be, he'd either be released from the national squad for a day to go and do that, or the paperwork would get would get him it somehow. Wasn't yesterday because he wanted to <laughs> you know, the paperwork would get him somehow. Um, but there's not, I mean, there's not even any, there have, not that I've heard, there haven't even heard any speculation of who might be in for him, which is quite encouraging because there's only, what, 10, 10 days left in his window now. Yeah. So you would have thought if there was anything going to be happening, the speculation would be rife. But, the other side of that is there's no speculation of who we are supposedly in for signing apart from the Scott Olsen thing won't go away. But apart from that, we're not, not really linked with anybody. And as Stuart says, we need an attacking midfield player. We need somebody out out, out wide uh, on the right hand side. You know? I, I don't know if you've we seen could, uh, as well. We could potentially do worse than we could sorry Stuart, we could potentially do worse than signing a, a starting centre back if we can find one as well, because we've got two or three of our centre backs injury prone. Running out of contracts, I expect Goldson's going to go. Exactly you know, so we might end up top, we end up top heavy for a couple of months, but better to get them yeah. in now if we can. I seen no. on some of the Villa um, pages on Twitter that they've been putting out that they're the three, well, the three names that they're looking at bringing in almost Nathaniel Price. Well, they're looking, they're, they're keeping a tabs on Nathaniel Price, um, Goldson, and I can't remember the third one, but it was just mainly Goldson. That, his name's getting talked about with Villa, so. Hi John, what about yourself? Where do you think we need to strengthen? Uh, def- definitely right hand side of the park, but I would like to see another another midfielder brought in. But definitely, yeah. definitely. The Tuesday night showed me how sort of light be- threadbare we are in the midfield. Yeah. I believe Davis was injured, but he hasn't really featured. Uh, I would say past five six games, he's, he's uh, he might have been might be suffering with a niggle, but. He's to, to not even be near any of the squads or any of the, any of the, on the pitch tells me that maybe Gio's doesn't fancy him. I think Friday's going to be, I think tomorrow night's going to be a big uh, highlight to see who he is willing to put in out in the team. And if some of the players can't even get in the team for to, uh, tomorrow night, you know their days are numbered. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, John Lund's sh- shop, shop window. Thing, he's, been in, he's been doing the press conference. So he'll, he'll be playing tomorrow, I'd imagine. And he said Balligan's going to be playing. Yeah. yeah. So. When's Hellander? Is Hellander back training now as well? Ah, he's training. Yeah. He's on light, light to Midland training, isn't he? He's not really on the full. That's, a, full that's the kind of training I'm doing now. <laughs> wouldn't, be surprised, wouldn't be surprised to see him on the bench, Hellander on the bench, maybe give him half an hour tomorrow. Yeah. Depending on how the game goes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this 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 question used to get asked on a weekly basis. Absolutely all, all not. No, no chance. Uh, no, he doesn't. He wouldn't. Have, and don't get me wrong. Uh, I love the Fergusons as a family. I've met them several times. Um, but no, Lewis wouldn't bring in anything additional to the to the to the squad. Never mind the first team. If it wasn't for his family line, he wouldn't even be getting quoted. It wasn't for the fact exactly. that his father is like that, he wouldn't even be getting that's quoted. I think as well. Uh, next is Alan Kelly's Gio's. He's asking. I don't think Bakuna has played yet under Gio, has I he? I think he's. I think he's played for ten minutes. I yeah, think he came off the bench for ten minutes. Was it the Motherwell game? He came on the I last so, ten, yeah. fifteen minutes of the Motherwell game. Yeah, yeah. Do you think so, he's got a future? I mean, nah. To me, if he he's another one, if he if he doesn't start tomorrow, then I think we'll be looking to offload him. And irrespective of, of whether Lundstrom starts tomorrow or not, I think I expect him to be away by the end of the window as well. Yeah. Seriously, I. Well, I think so. Yeah. If Forest will, will, will let me go to, 
come up here. Obviously, Huddersfield didn't, didn't rate him, and it was not championship standard. Not going to be good enough for us. I know we don't really like talking about the politics in football, but Linda, Linda Ross is saying our players and club just sit back and accept too much as what's thrown at us. We need to start fighting back. Well, the key, yeah, the but when we do us. start fighting back, we get we get pummeled by the by the mainstream media up here yeah, because of the agenda they've all got. But Ricky, they keep they keep telling us that you know the the directors and the CEO and that they keep telling us that they're they're working they're working on things in the background, and that's fine. And we've got no reason to disbelieve that, but it never seems to it never seems to come into fruition. Whatever negotiations they're having with whoever they're speaking to, nothing ever seems to come of it because it doesn't get any better for us. You know, I mean, the fans get treated like shit when we go to away games. We get shut to a pillar to post. The, the, the we we are one hundred percent. We get we get refereed to a different to a different standard. You know, uh, we get no breaks from from anybody. It's just I I think I think Linda's right. You know, we need we need to stand we need to stand up and fight. Yeah, but we, the need, problem, we, the we problem, need to get a top class PR company in um, that can actually spin this in our in our favour. You see the like, problem. Yeah. Like the problem. The problem is they've 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 they had ten years with us, not being in the top division to get to manoeuvre guys into positions of power, which is exactly what Lingle did, right? And as soon as, as soon as that that power got diluted a bit, he fucked off, yeah. right? His power got a bit diluted because we came back and Stuart Roberts is back on SPFL boards and stuff like that, and all of a sudden Lingle's retired. But he's still hanging about in the background because he's got so much influence, and he's manoeuvred himself into that position. They've got a compliant media, they've got compliant uh, authorities, oh, and it's going to take an it's going to take a long, long time for us to chip into that. But we need oh, yeah, we seem to be chipping into it. And that's what I'm saying. But we don't seem to be doing it. But we we need we need to bring in um, the facilitator that's going to actually start doing that because Stuart yeah. Robertson can't do it all by himself. So no. bring bring in bring in a company. That will. Yeah, I mean, Nic Nicola Stubborn saying we supporters should fight back also. So obviously we've got Club eighteen seventy two and there's Follow Rangers. I think there's a couple of other uh, fans groups out there as well saying they, you know, maybe they should be uh, fighting back. But then Nicola Stubborn saying we we pay the BBC license when our club gets treated differently from the rest, which is true as well. So but when, you, when you're talking about all these fan groups, uh, Ricky, and I, I don't want to get into the politics of the fan groups, but there's so much infighting. These fan groups at the moment. It's, but see, when we when we when our backs against the wall, we, we all stand together. But once we start getting making the, the, the steps forward, everything seems to just disintegrate. And some people have their own agendas. I don't yeah. get wrong; they love Rangers at heart, but everybody sees things different. You know that. It's you, it's you, you, it's you it's totally, totally, it's totally true, Stuart. And that's one of the main reasons I left. Is because every week we were having meetings and it was just arguments yeah you know and i was like why are you all arguing we're, we're all wanting the same thing you know and it was just it was draining I mean, i'd done it for three years and then eventually i just had to leave i couldn't do it any longer and i decided to step down when the mayor's done with the uh, club 1872 but even now as you say they're still they're still in fighting but as you say we don't want to don't want to go into that no, uh, no it's, it's, what, what we should in an ideal world as a support we would be we would all pull in the same direction and if we did, we'd get through all this. I think when you think of everybody else, it's, and I don't want to sound like uh, <laughs> obsessed, but the amount of people that don't like us is unreal, you know? And they do anything to put us down, you know? So, anyway. But, but that's, on, that's where I, but that, but Sorry, Ricky, before you move on, that's, that's where our support did, did galvanise and did come together. I mean, when we had, when we had what happened just 10 years ago, if it wasn't for the support, we wouldn't still be here. So, when... Yeah. When, as Stuart says, when the going gets tough, we can all get together. But when the things start getting a bit rosier, they all seem to go their own way again, which is really, really frustrating. Uh, yeah, it no, is. no. I mean, it is well. ten, ten years ago it was unreal. Uh, you think of <laughs> what we've done and where we've been, and now we're back. You know, uh, less clubs, just, and I mean, less our bigger clubs would have struggled to do what we did. There's no, I mean, there's no just, other club on the planet would have did what we did in uh, the space yeah. of time we've done it. No other club no. on the planet. Well, look, look when you look at Man City, took Man City about 12, 13 years to get back from Division Division 2 to the Premiership. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, was just, I was just recording another podcast there. I was just producing that. I wasn't on the show or anything. And uh, Alex Ray was on it. And you see, see the passion that guy's got, by the way. You know, it's, it, was, it was amazing. But one of the questions was asked, you know, what was his most memorable moment of being a, not just a Rangers player, but a Rangers <laughs> fan? 
Uh, do you know what, what was like? It'd be interesting to see John. Like, what was one of your most memorable moments of being an actual Rangers fan? You know, obviously it was Helicopter well, Sunday. It was seventy two. Well, probably uh, stopping Celtic's first going going for ten in a row because uh, basically uh, me growing up, that was probably the first time Rangers well, won the league before that. But that was the first time we'd won the league. Uh, and I'd been following them. I'd, my dad, my dad, on a supporters bus, and I'd watched them going every game, you know, home and home and away since I was about four or five, believe it or not. Uh, apart from the old film games, he wouldn't. He, he, he always said I wasn't allowed to go to them, but I used to sneak to them. I used to say I was going to the pictures with the mum on <laughs> going to the game. But anyway, I'd probably say one in the league at Easter Road was a big, big thing because I'd, I'd never experienced it until then. And obviously, Barcelona '72 was big. Yeah, so they're the sort of big milestones for me uh, as a Rangers fan. Well, and you've travelled everywhere with Rangers. You must have some amount of memories, some stories. Which one of your top ones? You know, one one of my one of my one of my top ones is a game I don't even I don't even consider that we won. Although we did win it on penalties, it was the semi final with Celtic and we drew two two, and we beat them on penalties. Because I had I had my daughter with me, I had Demi with me. Now Demi's been all over the place with Rangers, and when we scored that winning penalty, when I eventually came came back came back out came back out the sky and landed back at my seat, I looked around and Demi just had her phone. She was taking a selfie with the players dancing behind her, and just to look on her face, and I went, "I've done this right. I've actually done parenting right for once." That was one of my that's a memory that'll live with me forever, just because uh, the look in her face that day, and I could see what it meant to her because. As we all know, kids are the lifeblood of the club. You know what I mean. And it was, it was nice to know I'd done some, I'd done something right with one of my kids. That was, but I mean, for for other things, I mean, yeah, heli- helicopter, both helicopter Sundays, the Van Felman game at Ibrox and the, the game at Easter Road, uh, the two thousand and two cup final, last minute winner. You know, just Cooper's free kick against Aberdeen. There's, there's so many of them. You know what I mean. There's so so many. I mean, Stuart, Stuart being an old guy, love more than me. You know what I mean. <laughs> And you know, one, one, see one story I do, I, I do remember you telling us, Wilf, uh, with Demi. I think it was you were on, on the way to Kilmarnock game and she fell in the garage. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, this is quite this is quite a well a well known story, John. Yeah. You probably haven't heard this. This is a belter. And uh, we're on the way to win fifty. We're on the way to win fifty four. So that yeah. Walter's Walter's last game. We're going to Kilmarnock. And what was that? Ten years ago, Demi was eight. And I picked my mate up, I picked, I picked her up, picked my mate up, and we stopped at a filling station out in the outskirts of Aberdeen to fill up with fuel. And Demi's like, I'll need to go to the toilet. So she gets out of the car, and I'm standing at the pump filling the car up, and I just heard her scream, and she's sliding across the forecourt on her face. Right, there's, a van, there's a van pulled away from a petrol pump, and she's seen it coming and stopped, but she, she didn't really stop. Her legs stopped, but her body didn't. So she's sliding across the forecourt, I'm thinking, well, I'm not getting to this game, I'm not getting to this game. She lives 30 miles away, I'm not getting to this game. Yeah. So I take her into the toilet, clean up with the blood in her face. But our our mum's dad lives about a mile from where we are. I thought I can drop her, I can I can drop her off at his. So I looked her square in the face, I went, right, Demi, do you want me to take you to your papa's? And she looked me straight in the face and went, Dad, we've got a league to win, let's go to Kilmarnock. Brilliant. You know what I mean? And it was eight year old and it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. You know, and then she said to me, like, no I said, look, I'll take a photo, send it to your mum, tell her what's happened. She says, No photos, no photos. I said, look, send one to your mum and that's it. And we're at the back of rugby, we're at the outside rugby park for the and Kyle Bartley walks past in the club suit because he's not playing. She comes, she goes sprinting after him, Dad, get your camera. Kyle, Kyle, photo, photo. I said, what about no photos? It's Kyle Bartley, take the photo. It was what, it, just one of those days, you know? Yeah. Just one of those days. But for her to look me, as an eight-year-old to look me in the face and say, Dad, we've got a league to win, let's go to Kilmarnock. Just brilliant, absolutely That's brilliant. Now, Stuart, see, before I come to you, I've actually, a wee mate, a wee Jamesy, uh, I don't know if you've seen, but you get trolled off a total scum uh, this week I on social media. Uh, and we, so James, you're, you're a hundred times any guy like him, right? So just forget what he says. But he's actually saying, Wolf, can I believe you didn't say pre season at Tranmere? That was, uh, we got beat. I don't like, I don't like talking about games we get beat. So <laughs> there you go, James. That's why he's not mentioned it. Uh, but I, I'm going to see yeah. you next week, James. Anyway, aren't we? we're going to have a, a few pints because it's his 18th next week, so I'm looking forward oh, nice to that. Uh, right, Stuart, a wee memory. Ah, uh, and then we'll move on to the Sterling as, Albion game, I think. As the lads have uh, talked, there's so many. Um, I'm not old enough, to, well, 
I am old enough, but I can't even remember Colin Steen stop, uh, stopping their, their 10. Um, I think one of the biggest... Must have been, he must have been drunk. I, <laughs> no, there was, there was no electricity the, in Peter Head then. <laughs> I was in Corby then, though. I was, I was in Corby then. Um, but the, one of the biggest ones when I was growing up was the, the Sooners League victory at Pitaudry. Um Yeah, that was just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Just uh, like that was the first time in eight, eight years we'd, we'd uh, won the league. Um, and then after that, we just went on a, a roller coaster of emotions. Which was virtually all good. Uh, Manchester helicopter Sunday. Um, even the, the the Chris Sutton, the Chris Sutton league that with the with the last yeah. minute penalty from Arteta. Um, all the way through to us getting back up in the, the top division again. Just so many. I I, I couldn't pinpoint. A single one because they were, they've all got their their special place in my heart uh, for different reasons. It is, but what I would say one of the one of the most treasured moments was uh, the Ted McMinn uh, testimonial. Uh, that was the last game I attended with my dad, oh, and yeah. I was fortunate enough to get into the director's box as well, done as well, um, and my dad would have loved that. Being in the director's box for me, but he, he wasn't alive then. But yeah, the the Tenetman testimonial probably would rank there as the last game I attended with my dad. So tomorrow, Stirling Albion, uh, League Two team. Uh, Paul Martin saying it's a good chance for the French players to show their managers their worth tomorrow night. Even Paul, jo yeah, totally agree. John, would you would you start with a strong team, or would you let some of the can the younger players come in tomorrow or bring on the, the French players in the second half? I, I wouldn't normally right, start a strong, the strongest team, but go back to the dreaded winter break. I'm a great believer in football. It's momentum is the, the thing. We had good momentum before they, they, they curtailed it and stopped, brought it forward. And we haven't really come back to any of these breaks the past two, three seasons. And you know the, the, the fluency has been there, but I do think there's one or two players that need need a bit of a rest. To be honest with you, uh, whether 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 we do that or not, I don't like tinkering with the back line first and foremost. But we've got to get guys like Balligan back into the team. Get get not not back into the team, but get the minutes and and go for there. Uh, I would like to see something different in the midfield. What that is, I don't know. Uh, we talked about Bakuna. Is he going to be the guy? I don't think so. But I think we need a, a little freshen up. Uh, maybe maybe two or three players, two, th two or three changes. Maybe, maybe that, I think Ruth coming back in. I, I believe that's that's happening. So he'll play tomorrow or tonight. Well, that's, uh, that'll be good. That'll be good to get him back. Well, what about yourself? Would you start with a strong team or...? <laughs> As I said, as I said when I did the, the Rangers rabble last night, if it was up to me, I would say at the start of the eleven from from uh, Tuesday night, get out there, you owe the fans one, and put on a performance. But that isn't going to happen, because as John says, some of the guys need a rest. Uh, and as the manager said in his presser today, Balogun's definitely going to feature, and Roof's going to feature. So well, whether they start or not, and Lundstrom's probably going to come in. Yeah, he's probably going to come in. So um, whether whether you start. As strong as possible, and then bring a couple of guys on. I'm not sure, but when I only found out today when the manager was talking, there's only three subs in the Scottish Cup. I thought the Scottish Cup was five subs, but it's actually only three. So, because my original thinking was start quite strong, and then you know have a have a, a bench loaded with with fringe players and maybe a couple of youth boys. Yeah, and bring that's them on. As well. But but you can't do that if you only get three subs. Nah. You know, see, so we're going to have to start strong. I wouldn't tinker too much with the back line, but I mean, if he says Balling is going to come in. Then stick stick Balling in beside Goldson, and uh, put put Bassi to to the left back and give Barris a night off. Yeah, do you know or, I'm a, I'm a big sorry I'm a big fan of Bassi, uh, but I don't know Aberdeen the other night he looked very hesitant. He just didn't look him normal self, and he was like passing to Aberdeen players and things like that. But I think it was just a, a bad game. 
No, but I think you're right, Wolf. I would, I would start with the same team uh, and just give them another chance. Stuart, what about yourself? Yeah, start out strong. Start out strong. And if if we do manage to get maybe two or three in front, that's where you can maybe think about uh, bringing on some others. Um, maybe the likes of Leon King. I'd de- definitely have him on the bench. And then if we're, we're two or three in front, bring him on. And then just slowly bed him in. That'd be some experience for the young boy, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I thought it was five as well, Wolf. I thought it was across the board that they did agreed on. But then, yeah, so I was going to go with your point about having maybe three or four of the youngsters on the bench with a, with a view bringing them on at some point in the game. Um, but yeah, yeah, go strong, go strong. Go for the, the win early and then you can actually bring in some of the fringe players. We're, put, actually put getting quite a lot of, we're getting quite a lot of memories coming in, like favourite memories, so we'll maybe go back to that later. But what's, what's your predictions for tomorrow, John? Uh, 4-0, Rangers. Wolf? I'll go 5. Oh, the pressure to me now to go one or two ways. Do you know what? I'm going to go six. Six now. Who two? <laughs> the fives and threes champion. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm actually going to do... I'm going to give them one goal, just to be different. I always like to give them one goal. You know, so I'll do a wee five, a 5-1. Five uh, Are you going to put that on the Aye, aye, but I know that if Durant and that were here, they would have killed me. If I, I, I was know. never allowed to give them a goal, so uh, yeah. aye, I'll be 5 1. They'll maybe fall asleep when they're scoring too many goals, hopefully. But uh, I'd like to see Sakala get a, a couple of goals because he, he's saying he's not going to cut his hair again until he gets a, a couple of goals. So <laughs> get get that haircut. Uh, let's see where you all going to. Well, obviously, John, where, where will you be watching the game tomorrow? I uh, probably I'll, I'll just have to watch it in the house the mo- tomorrow morning. Uh, the, it's too early for the pub to open. They we, we do get the pub to open, but uh, it's just a, for the the, the the sort of nature of the game, Scottish Cup. There's not a big demand for it here, to be honest yeah. with you. There's a bigger there's a bigger demand there than there is at Easter Road tonight. I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures for there, but there's hardly a soul in the place. Seriously, I mean, even even cool even they haven't. Been, they haven't opened the stands behind the goal, and the other two, the, or the other, the stand opposite the big, the big new stand, the one opposite the main stand. Not a lot of folk yeah. in it. Yeah. I don't know how many is in the main stand, but there's, that's not not a lot at all. And they reduced the prices for it as well. Yeah. Even even the I game on Tuesday night, the, the, the empty spaces in Aberdeen and was, was was ridiculous. And, that, and that's Aberdeen's biggest game. Of, biggest game of, and that's Aberdeen's yeah, biggest game of the season. I know. Yeah. I know. There was a funny comment. Somebody says uh, nobody told them that the five hundred limit had been. Uh, <laughs> it changed. <laughs> so, who, who who would you who would you start, uh, Stuart? Tomorrow, who would your team be? Would you stick with roughly the same team? Uh, yeah, but I think I'd give McGregor a rest. I'd put McLaughlin in. Um, Tav Goldson. Um, if he's going to play Balogun, play him from right from the start. Give uh, move Bashi out to to the wing back. Give Bourne a rest, especially if, it, if if there is any damage to his nose or whatever. Um, midfield, yeah, it's going to be Lundstrom. It's, I think he's going to play Sands again. I think we'll play Sands again. Okay. Um, Haji, Sakala, Kent, Itton. Um, yeah, so that's what I think. There's uh, Alan Simpson saying if Sakala scores a hat trick with the shave his head, that's what I done when I last scored my hat trick, and it's just no good, just not growing back in yet. I was the same Ricky. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to go and back look at some of these memories because some of them are quite good. And I'm, as I'm reading them out, I'm thinking where where was I at that point? Uh, so I'm just having to scroll through because there's, there's loads of questions coming in. But here's one of my mates who drinks in Lounge Seventy Two. Where you're heading next week, Stuart, aren't you? That's right. Yes. Friday, Saturday, but uh, Stephen saying his favourite memory has to be Florence. Uh, that was a special yeah. night, wasn't it, Wolf? That was a great. That was a that was a great night. That was. Um, were you there? Aye, were you there? Oh I yeah. You oh, I was there. Aye, yeah, yeah. I've got a wee funny story about Florence as well. Actually, after the after we obviously we, we, we scored the penalty and we were in the final, and we'd kind of calm down a bit. 
I'd gone to the under the under the stand and it was quite it was quite quiet just before it all got absolutely tonto again and I phoned home and my missus at the time was a carer and I've got no recollection of phoning her and I was totally sober. I've got no recollection of phoning her and apparently all you, all she heard down the phone was me screaming yes and she was putting an old woman to her bed and the woman was at the other side of the room and she went, What the fuck was that? She says, Oh Rangers have just got to Manchester. I've got no recollection of making the phone call and the woman was at the other yes, side sir. of the room. I just screamed down the phone. I just just must have been adrenaline. It was just, it was incredible. Just an absolutely magnificent night. Absolutely magnificent night. Shame the helicopter. Where were you, John? I, John, obviously, like it must be totally different down in Australia. But I, I was in my house. Did you for that? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what I done was, I mean, my, what I done as soon as the whistle went, I opened my French doors and I just did what Wolf did, and I just screamed yes <laughs> at the back. So That's amazing. Uh, there's Arthur Rogers, and I'd like to chuck in the 1973 Cup final. Alfie putting his in the lead just after half time, and Big Tam scoring a screamer for the winner. That was two years before I was born, so. I was, uh, I was Stuart. <laughs> I was born two years before that. Aye. You Arthur, had the game, John? Arthur, Arthur, Arthur game, never, right? ever shuts up about that. Arthur never yeah. shuts up about that. Arthur's a, good, Arthur's a good pal of mine, and he's also, right. uh, he's also a good pal of Alfie Cons as well. That's why he keeps mentioning Alfie. So. Yeah. Excellent. With the yeah. with Helicopter Sunday, I'll give you a funny story with Helicopter Sunday. I was up at the game before, like, uh, and I got offered a ticket and I went, money was a bit tight at the time and I couldn't afford to go up. So I ended up in the Rangers Club in Corby, ready for the game. Um, so we're there all day. And in the Rangers Club in Corby, they, have, they used to have an end of season party no matter what happened. So if we won the league, it was a brilliant party. If we didn't win the league, it was a brilliant party. So we're there, and I'm sitting with a good good few of my pals, and Scott McDonald scores a goal, and the, the I remember coming up and sit down and sensational news coming um, from Third Park, and the, the place just fucking erupted, absolutely erupted. It took us four hours to find out that Scott McDonald had scored a fucking second one. It did, because we were just partying, just partying for nobody, had seen, nobody had a clue. That Scott McDonald had scored a second goal. It was. And then I took great, then I took great joy. You got up to the, to the other club I drank in, with, which was a mixed club, and ripping the piss at the fucking team. A, a mix? Did you say it was? A did you say it was a mixed <laughs> club or a mixed, mixed club? <laughs> mixed. <laughs> M-I-X-E-D. There's John Doyle saying, Big Hatley versus Aberdeen, final day of season 91. Greatest memory, what a day. Here's go up in the back of my neck thinking about it. Is that and the I one know, where... I know exactly where I was that time as well. Did I we know of a depleted squad there? Yeah. I was walking yeah. in between Braemar and Ballata for a sponsored walk for the Tavern Trampers in Peter Reid. Well, the Tavern Pub. Okay. We, used yeah. to, we used to have a, a sponsored walk um, group where we, do, we would always do like Braemar and Ballata um, and then walk around Loch Mick on the on the Sunday, and that's exactly what I was listening to on my um, my Walkman with a gammy knee. Well, there's a there's a there's a good uh, Mark Haley talking about that on a on a previous Blue Heart podcast with Gary, because I asked him a question about that game when when Gary interviewed him about his new book, and Mark tells a cracking story about that. So if anybody's not seen that, jump back into the. Yeah. The Blue Heart Archive on YouTube, and you'll see that Mark talks really well about that game. When he no, when he sees see Michael Watt in the, when he sees Michael Watt in the uh, in the tunnel, and going, is that fucking is that the mascot? Oh, that's the goalkeeper. Right, throw one in the first <laughs> minute. I'll just have a I'll have a wee word in his ear. <laughs> I can see Gary actually telling me to remember and share, like, follow us, do everything in socials. Make sure you follow the Blue Heart Podcast. Subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Oh, sorry, subscribe. Subscribe. I should know all this. Uh, it's oh, been a while. Should. I know. Do you know? There's uh, Nicola's been sending a few texts there saying what's happened with Blues Brothers podcast. Uh, unfortunately, five mm. stars didn't bring it back. Uh, so it was nothing to do with myself, Durant, or Fergie. But we are bringing back a podcast, and it was going to be a couple of weeks, but it's going to be a few months now because uh, Durant is uh, going in for an option. So we're going to be a couple of months delayed anyway. But uh, see, see the the game they're talking about there. I'm sure Durant was actually injured, but he was on the bench. Won that game, and then I they ended up bringing him on. But it was like, was, it, was this not the one that Walters was playing? Walters said to John Brown, "Oh, I think oh, I've got a wee hamstring's a bit tight. I've got, I've, I've got a wee tight." <laughs> I think John Brown was playing, who, or who was playing with a broken 
Somebody was playing with a Tam, broken leg. Tam Cowan Tam 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 played, Tam 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 played 20 minutes of a broken leg. Bom, Bomber was out knowing that his hamstring was going to go. His Achilles he was hamstring was, his, sorry, his Achilles was going to explode at any at any time. It was just, it was like the emergency ward 10. McCoy's playing uh, play centre midfield. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. <coughs> Someday. Uh, there's Alan Simpson saying, getting swept onto the field from the Western Closure 1987 against St Midden, first league in nine years. Some memories, isn't it? That was that was the day we got the trophy. How was that that game as well? That was uh, that was good. Right. Uh, that was well, good. since you go abroad all the time in all the European games, you can say the name of that team because there's no chance oh. I can pronounce that. Alania Vladi Kavkaz was a bit special. That's um, <laughs> I was actually gonna I was actually gonna give a shout out to Rob because he sent me a message about about twenty minutes ago saying it's a chance it's a good chat, and he sent me one of his photos from. Uh, Kilmarnock was when we were talking about the, the Kilmarnock 5-1 game because Rob's actually the second the second best snapper in Scottish football uh, behind my good pal Willie Vass Rob's, uh, Rob's <laughs> very close on his Rob's very close on his tail so I don't know I was, uh, I was ready to phone Willie there and say <laughs> no no Rob's a Rob, uh, Rob, Rob's a good guy but Willie always manages to catch me Rob's too busy photographing the action to take photos of the fans to be fair well, here's a cracking comment from Linda Ross. She's saying ba- Bassey was hesitant the other night, Ricky. He should have stuck the head in brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's, good. That's a good one. Uh, in fact, here's your mate Arthur, actually. Just for Wilf, another memory is my first old firm game against uh, Ibrox where a certain Mr. Cohn scored the winner in the last minute, yeah. January 1973. Uh, John remembers that. I do, aye. I did. Good memories. How, how, how long have you been over in Australia for, John? Uh, this is me on thir- coming on thirteen years now. Thirteen years is in July. So, uh, how how, how often do you get back to I, watch Rangers? I came out, I came out and uh, to, to validate my visa two thousand and seven. I'll just come back. So we be story about Manchester. We came out. We liked it. We said we'll sell the house after Christmas. We'll, we'll stay in Christmas, and then the GFC the, the the market just crashed. So it took me two years to sell my house, which was good because Rangers got to Manchester, and I was able to go to the final. Brilliant. Otherwise, I'd have been right. struggling about here to get back for the final um, yeah. and getting tickets and stuff like that. So I managed to squeeze in Manchester before I came back out here. And I came out in the July and Celtic were out in Brisbane three weeks before I arrived, so I missed them as well. Which was <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that's was near the end of the podcast. Because uh, yeah. all the questions seem to be drying up a wee bit. Uh, I think we're all just gagging to get back to Ibrox tomorrow. Uh, so what's your plans tomorrow then Stuart because I know you'll not be coming up till next week no, so where are you going to no, watch it I'll just watch it in this just watch it in this just a, a sober, sober weekend for you then I'm in training to run up your barbell on Friday and Saturday so aye aye we'll, we'll see we'll see <laughs> No, nah, it's, it's, it's a decent pub so it's a really good pub actually I'm not, it's not just decent I, I was in there doing the karaoke last Saturday night uh, and the place was bouncing, you know, it's great, especially the fact that we nippies put the restrictions on us, it's still a, a really busy pub and it's still a great atmosphere. I kind of think of a better place than being in the Rangers pub, uh, to be honest, you know, but, uh, well, what time are you heading down tomorrow? You must be leaving pretty sharp. Um, I'm actually going down with the Granite City Rangers supporters club tomorrow just for a wee change. Normally I would drive down, but my work's due me a couple of hours after I had a, had a long a wee trip up to Thursday on Monday, so I says, right, well, I'm take the time back. Um, I'll take it on Friday, finish work at 1, bus leaves at 2, pick the way up in Dundee, back at 3, half 3, something like that, and then just do the road, so let somebody else do the driving for a change. How's she getting on at university, so, Wolf? She's loving it. Yeah. I don't, know if she's loving the, I don't know if she's loving the studying so much, but she's certainly loving life. <laughs> she's, uh, she's got involved with the University of Women's Football team, so she's, oh, nice she's, 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 playing, she's playing with them, and she's going to other training, and their, their social Hello, lives and right, things, right. so uh, she's... I will do. Uh, she's, she's absolutely loving it. She's loving it. That's excellent. And Dundee's handy because it's halfway down the road for me, so I can just pick it up in the maiden. You know what I mean? Well, you've got to be through Dundee anyway, haven't you? Well, exactly. Yeah. Only well, thing is, it means I need to stop. I need to stop in Dundee, so I've got to watch, watch make sure I can out with wheels. You know what I mean? <laughs> <coughs> oh, do you know I'm, I'm actually getting texts off everybody seeing where I'm going for the game tomorrow night or what I'm doing. So uh, I'm in a. A few people are asking what pub we're talking about there, uh, Stuart. So it's Lounge 72 in Eddingston, but I also like to go to the Loudon before and after the game as well. So uh, I think I'll be in the Loudon tomorrow and then I'm doing the karaoke 
I'm actually hosting the karaoke, which is do- dodgy because I'm a terrible singer. Uh, but I think I'm good when I've got a few drinks in me. But I it's Lounge 72 in Erdingston. It's a great Rangers pub. Uh, but I, it's been great to be invited back on again with you guys. I've obviously been gone for about two months. Uh, but I hope to see you guys again soon. And right. to everybody, uh, thanks for watching. I, I, I think everybody's probably wondering why I'm constantly looking up here. This is where my TV screen is in the studio. I was meant to be doing this in the house and then somebody booked a, a podcast just before this one. So I had to actually come in and do a bit of work. So apologies if you've just seen the back of my balding up. <laughs> but, well, for you, anything else, any shout outs you want to do before we shoot? Uh, no, I just... I was going to say hello to Jamesy, but you've already, you've already covered that one because it was what happened to the other night. It was absolutely it was fucking disgusting. But it was good to see the, the Rangers. I mean, as, as we were saying earlier, you know, Rangers, the Rangers family can be a wee bit split at times, but it was nice to see everybody rallying behind Jamesy and just telling yeah, them yeah. that, you know, we all love them and uh, they ignore, ignore the trolls and, you know, just, just go on with it. Just, just, that's what the block yeah. button's for. Just get, get rid of them. You know, people just can't help themselves sometimes. You know? Um, and... Obviously, enjoy yourselves next weekend at the uh, the wee soiree for the the wee man's eighteenth birthday. You know, can't I can't even believe can't believe he's eight, can't believe he's eighteen to be fair. You know what I mean? I know. You know. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. actually having a, a couple of drinks with him on Monday night. He's coming into the lounge seventy two on Monday as well. Uh, he's going for lunch first, and he's going to put. In fact, I don't know if that was maybe a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I'm terrible at things like that. Jamesy, I was only kidding. We're not really having pints on Monday, all right? You've got, you've uh, got angels. Oh, I'm just, I'm just waiting and checking my my phone and Heather and Deke will be like, "What have you done?" <laughs> <laughs> Aye, uh, John, what about yourself? Any shout outs? Uh, no, nah, just just a shout out to all the Rangers fans. Just stay calm uh, and let's get out there and get back on the road again and, and get the winning ways. Is that? Wolf. I just just echo that. Everybody going. To oh, sorry, tomorrow. sorry. I mean, I mean, sure. You've already had. You've already had your shout out. I know. Correct. <laughs> you both look the same. That's what it is. Aye. Aye. Cheers. <laughs> same here, dudes. <laughs> Stuart. Yeah. Just, uh, just hope everybody go, goes to the game tomorrow. Get uh, the result they want. Um, have a good night. And yeah, don't worry about it. Because fifty six is coming. So that definitely is. Uh, must. Aye, so I think that's us then. So thanks again for having us and uh, watching us and spending the past hour with us. And I'm sure he's will be back on when he's back on. Next Friday, I'd imagine if Stuart can come live from the from Live 72, that'd be handy. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that could be arranged. I wouldn't well, like I'll to see the, the nick of that. I'll take the iPad with me. <laughs> anyway, take care, I'm everyone. Sure Ricky will be the Wi-Fi password. Thank you. No, no, it's, yeah, it's yeah, just Ricky. been changed. Yeah. <laughs> take care.